Boston Celtics cap a successful month with another blowout win, this time over the shorthanded Miami Heat. Thank you to the Jays, who are not only filling it up, but stepping up their leadership. And Marcus Smart, point God. Eh, well, maybe I'm pushing it a little bit, but I'm going to talk about it right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making it part of your daily routine and your first listen every day. Lockdown Celtics free, available wherever you get your podcasts and the shows on YouTube. I'd love it if you watch the show on YouTube. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I'm there uh, at the games uh, in the locker room, well, not in the locker room anymore, but in the post-game media sessions. And I've written a book called Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars. I was one of the media voters for the 75th anniversary team. And uh, I'm here for you after a Boston, Boston Celtics 30-point blowout win over the Miami Heat, 122-92. I'll talk about the big headline in this game, which I think the turnaround in the second quarter and the, once again, Schroeder smart combination. Got to get rid of that thing. Uh, we'll get into that part in the in the first segment. Second segment, the Jays. Really going to focus in on the Jays, their leadership. Two different instances this past week of their leadership being mentioned. So I'll talk about that later on. The success of the past month. This was a successful month for the Celtics in a season where we are scrambling to find any success. That we found, at least to a degree, in January. And we could find a lot more coming up moving forward. Let's start here with the game, the basics. The Celtics started off strong. Then in the second quarter, uh, coinciding with Schroeder, smart overlapping minutes. Again, uh, the Celtics gave up an 18-5 to run to start the second quarter. Then Emi Odoka called a timeout at, when the game was tied at 32. And because the Celtics had a, a like a 16-17 point lead. All of it goes away, tied at 32. Ime Udoka calls a timeout. Marcus Smart says of the timeout, uh, not in not so many words, basically stop dicking around is what Ime Udoka told them. They stopped dicking around. They went on a 9-0 run. They never looked back. They built the lead uh, in the end up to 30, and that's the story of the game. The Celtics, uh, I will say, have been a little lucky over this past little stretch here of these wins. This game against Miami, and and Ime said it after the game, there were some wide-open shots, and it burned them in the second quarter. In the first quarter, it it felt like Miami was just kind of missing. In fact, when I was doing my Boston Sports Journal kind of live running updates of, of the game, my first kind of early take was Celtics came out hot, Miami came out cold. This game could have been a much different game if like Max Struess and Duncan Robinson had been hitting shots early on. Now, Struess hit some shots after the first quarter. Tyler Hero came in in the second quarter and was really hitting. But if if those shots started to fall in the first quarter, it would have been a much different game. Now, I want to be clear that the beginning of this game, the Celtics were, were hot. They were, they were moving the ball. They were pitching it ahead. They were playing offensively. They were playing a lot better. Defensively, they were, they, were, they were making some mistakes. It cost them in that second quarter, and Ime did the classic now pissed-off Ime. You know, it's a, a pissed-off Ime timeout because the way it normally works with, with him is he calls a timeout, the guys sit down, Ime and his assistants huddle at the free-throw line. I've said this before on the podcast. They drop their ATO. They're out of timeout. Uh, play and then he sits down and he says what he's going to say and he draws up the play and they move on that's the standard email timeout pissed off email timeout is uh a very first of all it starts with a very dismissive like he's pissed off at the team 
and he sees the ref and he just time out. Just it doesn't do the point. Like sometimes, you know, when you want the timeout, you're upset. You point to the ref. Some guys will do the big like timeout sign or whatever. Ime just throws his hands in the air. Rawr, rawr, timeout. <laughs> Pissed off. That's my that's my first crack at an Ime impression. <laughs> Very bad. <laughs> uh, then he'll either do one of two things. He'll go meet the guys as they're walking almost at midcourt and start like talking and gesticulating and pointing and tapping on chests. He lets these guys sit down. Then he, then he sits down. So now, you know, Oh no, he mad because he's not even waiting. He's not even going to the assistants. He sits down and he's like, all right, you guys. And I'm sure there are many choice words. You can see him pointing and, and jet the whole thing. He sits them down. You know, Marcus says what he says there. Uh, the message is very clear. They come out on a 9-0 run after that. Ime's done this before. Guys have responded, and, and that's the important part is they, they do tend to respond out of this. Now, Ime has played like a very short rotation. He's only gone with eight guys, and he started in the second quarter to overlap Again, the Schroeder Spart minutes is the only time they overlapped, and it was a disaster. That's part of when the the the, the lead started to, to dissipate. When you look at the box score, it, it mostly it's, the, it's it's all starters. Tatum plus thirty, Horford plus twenty four, Rob plus twenty six, Jalen plus twenty eight, Smart plus twenty five. Smart is a a plus minus God since he's returned on the flip side, the bench, I mean, the, the Peyton and Romeo and Ennis, like those guys were a plus, but that doesn't really count because they were all garbage time. Schroeder minus seven in a game. The Celtics led ultimately won by 30 and led for most of the game. Actually, they led for all of the game. They, ne- they never fell behind, but in this entire game, Schroeder minus seven. So he is not doing well with the decreased opportunity, which is something that he made talked about after the game. He is not doing well now kind of going starter to bench, starter to bench, which in retrospect, maybe it just would have been better to say, you know what? Schroeder is coming off the bench no matter what. And obviously it would have been better. It would have been better for Marcus Smart. It would have been better for Schroeder. Maybe it would have been better for his attitude, whatever. We know that Schroeder is a strong guy, strong-willed guy, and, and maybe there was a promise made. Hey, you're gonna be the, the you're gonna come off the bench, but when guys get hurt, we'll we'll put you in there. Now I don't know. I, I'm just guessing at that. I don't know anything about that. Maybe maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. I don't know. But it's very clear that the Schroeder smart combination is toxic on the floor. They like each other, they seem to like each other, but or or tolerate, I don't know. They don't dislike each other. And, and again, to be fair, I, I, I get on shooter a lot on this podcast is not a personal thing. He's always on the, when he's on the bench, he's always active. He's always rooting the guys on he's engaged uh, just because he's not a good fit. And because he doesn't, I, I don't think his overall motivations are the same motivations as everybody else's. Like obviously he wants to win, but he also is trying to get a new contract, so that's part of the whole thing. But he is he's gutsy, and I think part of it is that Ime likes that Schroeder plays through a ton. I asked him, uh, Schroeder was kind of not quest- probable with some Achilles soreness, and Ime mentions like he's a guy that just plays through a ton of stuff, which I think a coach, especially like Ime, respects. So... Schroeder's look, he's tough. He plays through these injuries. He plays through the nagging stuff more so than a lot of guys on this team. Like I I'll defend some of the guys on this team as far as their overall, the overall perception of their injuries, but they're just not going to play through some things like Schroeder tends to play through. Uh, and, and like I said, he seems to be a good teammate and Al Horford likes him. So if Al Horford likes him, then I, I, I guess like I'm on board with Al Horford. Like <laughs> when has Al Horford been wrong or purposely led people astray? If, if Horford likes you, 
then you got something going for you. So this is not an anti shooter necessarily thing, but it's an anti shooter fit. He does not fit. His motivations do not fit. Yes, he wants to win and all of that stuff. Smart is the guy. Smart is the point guard of this team. And it, once again, once again, it's been proven in this game. Marcus Smart, this is a tweet from Jay King, formerly of the Lockdown Celtics podcast, now of The Athletic. He's plus 25 in this game. Celtics have outscored opponents by 118 points in his last 144 minutes on the floor. That, that is insane. Smart was, and one of my favorite stats of this game for Marcus Smart, four of seven from three, six of nine overall shooting. Marcus Smart never stops at seven three-point attempts when he's made four. Smart never stops at seven. Never stop. Four of seven, he's hitting 57% from three, and he only takes nine shots overall in the game. He stops taking threes at seven. That I mean, th- this isn't like he played 28 minutes. Yeah, he came out a little early because of garbage time, but he played plenty. He made more three-pointers than anybody else. Normally, Marcus Smart would be like, oh, I'm feeling it. 15 three-pointers on a game like this. And he'd just be like, hey, I got it. I, whatever. I, I Follow me, boys. Nope. He still played within himself, understanding that when Smart is the point guard and he's not trying to make up for Jalen or Jason being out or another, another scorer being out, when he has the two Js on either side and he's got Rob going down the middle and he's got the fifth guy out there, whether it's Al Horford or whomever, that is a potential scorer. Smart, more often than not, plays a game like this. Seven assists, minimized his, his shooting. He kept shooting a little bit because he was hot, but didn't even, didn't even pass 10 field goal attempts, which is great. Two steals, one turnover. Perfect Marcus Smart game. For me, perfect Marcus Smart game, great defense, great offense, has everything organized, pushes the tempo, watch these guys, you know, he, he leads the charge, gets the ball, pushes it up, forces the guys to keep up with me. Come on, let's go. Keep up with me. He's going to be the first guy over half court with the ball. You guys got to keep up. Let's go. Now you're starting to see the pitch aheads. Now you're starting to see the wings starting to keep up a little bit. Let's move this ball up. Let's understand. Now, Jalen gets 19 shots. Tatum gets 15 shots, but the ball is still popping. They had 24 assists. They had 24 assists. The ball is moving. And guess what, guys? Naturally, Tatum and Brown are going to get the majority of the shots because even though the ball is moving and you got to give it up, those guys are going to get it back because the ball finds the right energy. The ball finds the right scorers. And those are the scores. That's why, even with the ball moving, not a lot of ISO, Jalen gets 19 shots, Jason gets 15 shots. So that's, what, 34 shots of the 84. So that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Marcus Smart organizing the team is a massive reason why they're able to do it. So four wins out of five games, all blowouts. That Atlanta loss stands out as an outlier. But up next, since I'm talking about the Jays, more about their performance and their steps forward as leaders on this team. First, let's talk about TurboTax. People think unusual circumstances mean complicated taxes, but for TurboTax Live experts, that's what makes things interesting. We all have unique lives, so whether you invest in crypto for the first time or own an up-and-coming small business or raising rambunctious twins, Luckily, TurboTax has live TurboTax Live has experts who can answer your tax questions. They can walk you through the whole process. They can do your taxes from start to finish. They help you get every deduction you deserve. That is so important, no matter your unique situation. And you can talk to TurboTax Live experts through your phone or your computer without leaving your house. TurboTax Live experts are here to help you 
however you need. And if you need an extra hand, hand your taxes off to them. They'll do it all for you. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. TurboTax.com. You do your thing. They've got your taxes. Into it, TurboTax Live. Let's also talk about Rock Auto. Our good friends at Rock Auto are here after this major blizzard in the New England area, Massachusetts, trudging through the snow. You know your car is going to need a ton of work. It's, you're going to hit a pothole. Something's going to happen. Maybe you've just discovered that the wipers are shot, or maybe you broke a wiper. I'm not saying I've done this, but with the scraper, you're kind of like in a hurry and you broke something. Rock Auto is going to save time. It's going to save money. Why choose to spend 30 to 50 to 100% more for the same parts at a chain store or car dealership? You do not have the time or the energy to do that. Rock Auto is a family-owned business. It's a family business that's been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are reliably low. Just go in there, plug in all the same information you'd give to one of those people at that chain store at the strip mall and save some money. Go explore their easy to use website today to find a solution for your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now to see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure you write locked on in their how did you hear about us box. That's how they know we sent you. When you check out, there's gonna be a how did you hear about us box. Write locked on in there. That's how they'll know. It's an amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Really do appreciate that. Make sure you're joining me and my friends on February 10th, trade deadline day, for a special live show starting at 2, covering the deadline right up to the first hour uh, leading into it and then the hour leading out of it. It's me. It's Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy. It's Antonio Daniels, former NBA vet, and Kim Becker, who's hosting Locked On Now, Make sure you're subscribed to the Locked On Now podcast and get analysis of every move, blockbuster move, minor move, no moves. If for some reason no moves happen, lots of things going on in the NBA right now, injury-wise, that are going to affect the trade deadline. So make sure you're subscribed to Locked On NBA on YouTube. That's where the show is going to air. Uh, turn on your notifications so you know when we go live on February 10th, the trade deadline. So the Jays came into this game again hitting their shots, 49 combined points for Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, just two turnovers for Tatum, none for Brown. So that, that big kind of, I don't want to say aberration, but like return to the, the worst of their habits, the worst of their performances in the Atlanta game cleaned up again. I know that the, the wins that they've had have been against bad teams. However, they're getting it done. And if they protect the ball, and they can hit their shots, then these guys are, are, are obviously going to be able to carry the Celtics a long way. He may said it before the game. He's basically, we go, we go as far as they go. And everyone, I think, understands that. Jalen Brown, 11 of 19 shooting, 3 of 9 from 3, 29 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals. Again, no turnovers, which is big. Jason Tatum, 20 points, 7 of 15 shooting, 3 of 7 from 3. Um, 12 rebounds, five assists, second only to Marcus Smart, who had seven to lead the team, uh, two turnovers for him, but overall great performances. And, and like I said before, they're joining smart and, and, and the full health means something for this team with smart working under the direction of Ime Odoka, pushing the pace pace is such an important part of what the Celtics are trying to do here. If the Celtics cannot play with pace, they're not going to win these games. The whole thing with the Celtics offense. And, and as an aside, let me just say, things are actually starting to pan out the way we've been saying, I've been saying from the beginning. Once they're full, once they're healthy here, the storylines that we're starting to see materialize are actually the storylines that, that I thought were going to be coming in. So this is going to be a good defensive team. They have the ability to be a very like elite defensive team, and they are. Offensively, they have to move. They have to move the ball. They have to make sure that they're cutting, 
and, and getting everybody involved. That's really the only way they're going to have a dynamic offense at all. The, the individual ISO stuff is just not going to work. The way this team is going to score is by ball movement and cutting and passing and creating open looks, wide open looks. Now they've, they've not hit shots, wide open shots earlier this season. That's a bit of an aberration. They're starting to hit those wide open shots now, but we knew coming in, the Celtics were going to struggle to score. They're going to have to score in transition, which they, in this game, were running actual competent transition, fast breaks. They were actually moving the ball, swing, swing, get it to a corner. It wasn't just bring it up and, and take the first shot or pull up jumpers or anything like that. There were a couple, I will say, Jalen and Jason, the, they will do that from time to time. Just got to live with a couple of the, the hero ball pull-ups from time to time. As long as they're minimized, uh, like, like it was a 17, 18, 19 point game. And I remember Jalen pulling up, you know, you want to get it up over 20. Ideally, perfectly, I, I still wouldn't take that shot, but whatever. Uh, I digress. I digress from my digression. But the Celtics offense needs to move. These guys need to move. And this is what I was saying in the first segment. The ball movement is always going to result, not, not not almost always going to result in getting the best look. The first basket that they scored, beautiful backdoor, uh, a cut from from Robert Williams, Marcus Smart. They, it's, I think it was a design play where Marcus Smart comes up to the middle, flashes to the the free throw line. Tatum hits him with a bounce pass. Horford's in one corner. Jalen's up top. So Marcus Smart turns the corner, and, and as soon as he's turning the corner, he's he's starting on the left side of the lane. He comes down baseline to come back up. He's making like a little U. He sees, as he's seeing, I, oh, there's Al. Oh, there's Jalen. So now he knows, well, I've got one guy on me. That's three guys. So he looks over, and either the play works to perfection or the reads are to perfection, which one way or the other, whether it was a design play or not, I don't know. But Rob sets a pick for Jason Tatum. And basically, it wasn't a zone, but it looked like they were getting ready to blitz Tatum, which I think this makes me think it was a design play because Rob slips it immediately. Now, maybe Rob saw an empty corner and said, oh, maybe he saw the same thing Smart saw. Either way, as soon as Rob makes that, that cut, slips the screen, it's a bounce pass to Marcus Smart, which is a no-look bounce pass to Rob for the dunk. That's the type of offense that they need. It's always going to find the right guy to me. It's always going to find the right guy, and these guys are going to be the beneficiaries. But beyond this, and the big story for me from Tatum and Brown, is that Horford especially has been talking about Jason Tatum before the Atlanta game. He said Jason Tatum was very vocal about in, in shoot around about how we needed to step up. And then after this game, he says, uh, you know, for me, Jalen Brown is the guy that's, that's stepping up in, in the locker room, getting us focused. Um, he is very, very complimentary of Jalen Brown after this game. So you're hearing from Horford and maybe this could be as simple as like the old wrestling tactic where the, you know, the big veteran guy gets the young guys over with the crowd, like, you know, two, two guys working together. And it's, you know, <laughs> um, you, you know, I don't know. You, I don't want to get too deep into the wrestling stuff, but you, you have like a, a stone cold Steve Austin, who's going to, you know, fight some younger guy. And that's going to be an up and coming guy. And, you know, stone cold gets him over by, you know, making it look like, oh, this guy's really working on 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 Steve, and you know, it takes a stunner out of nowhere to to win this match. And whoo, this guy really gave Stone Cold a run for his money. Same concept for Al Horford. I can't believe I made that deep a wrestling analogy, but for Al Horford, could be like everybody sees Al Horford as the big leader, right? Everybody accepts Al Horford, veteran leader. And now he is giving the shine to you know, hey, look, it was JT. Before the Atlanta game. Now, the Atlanta game went 
south, but it wasn't for lack of preparation. It was lack of execution. And then this one, it's, wow, Jalen has really been, you know, helping us get focused. And, and there's a, a, a narrative being built that out of Horford, you know, out of Horford's mouth, it's, whoa, look at the leadership from Jalen Brown. Look at the leadership from uh, Jason Tatum. But Marcus Smart after the game was like, yeah, Jalen has been vocal and this is what we need from him. And joked around. He's like, he's come a long way from the guy who's like running out there uh, like a chicken with its head cut off. And, and that's, that's a little bit of what Jalen was early on in his career, but he's grown a lot. The leadership of these guys is, is a huge thing. It's a big topic and, and could be its whole podcast. And I'm running way long in this podcast already talking about this stuff, but this is like a nonlinear kind of progression. Like, these guys are are in their early 20s, mid 20s now. Jalen's what, 25? This is like an, an athlete's life is basically the, the an athlete's career is like normal life condensed into like a, a fraction of the time. Because your rookie year is like your your birth slash early toddler years where you're learning to run. And then at this point, this is kind of like the, uh, for, for Jalen, especially and, and Jason, this is like that, the teenage years, this, like you're finding yourself, you're 15, you're 16. You're like starting to explore like who you are as a person. And then all of a sudden, like in year, the, the next year, like five, six, seven, you're in your thirties. Like you, you, everything's accelerated. So where these guys were and where they are now, where they're going to be is so different. And we get so caught up in like, are these guys good leaders or not? We want everything now, now, now. It's like the, the Homer Simpson line when Mo turns uh, Mo's tavern into uh, Uncle Mo's family feed bag and they get the flash fryer. He goes, I got the flash fryer from the Navy. You can flash fry a buffalo in 40 seconds. And Homer says, 40 seconds, but I want it now. That's how we are with these guys, the, the Jays, and, and are they leaders? We want their, we want them to come in and be fully formed leaders in the first two, three, four years. Sometimes it takes time for these guys, and and we're starting to see, and we got to rely on Horford and Smart to kind of be our eyes and ears. They, from what they said after the game, like. Yes, Jalen is starting to step up. Jason is starting to step up. We're hearing them more. We're, we're feeling their, their leadership more. That's a big deal. If throughout all of this crazy crap, if guys rising up against the adversity and becoming great leaders or better leaders is part of the result, then this season will be worth it. You know, maybe, maybe it took a bunch of adversity to get these guys to be like, you know what? I can't sit here and just be silent. I can't, I got to I got to step up. I got to be more vocal. I got to bring these guys together. Maybe it took a while for them to understand, like this team takes the shape of whatever we are. And if we're going to be quiet and whatever, this team's going to be quiet. We've got to step up. So hopefully we're seeing that start to take shape. We'll see. Up next, a closer look at a successful January. This was a successful month. No matter how you cut it, it was a successful month. So I'll be talking about that next. First, let's talk about Bet Online. There might be less football being played, but BetOnline.net has way more odds and info for this playoff season. From scores, totals, playoff, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, Bet online is the number one spot for all things NFL betting in 2022, and it's not just football. BetOnline.net's basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC odds coverage is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, BetOnline is your number one online wagering destination. BetOnline, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please, my friends, gamble responsibly. Let's also talk about 
my good friends over at Crack Sauce, C-R-A-I-C out of Lowell. Crack Sauce is a locally made uh, craft hot sauce. It's not just peppers and vinegars is going to blow your face off hot, which is fine sometimes. I was just down in New Orleans. Uh, great food, great hot sauces there. Uh, but sometimes it's just he, he, he. This is a Celtic season ticket holder, first of all, uh, employing local people, going through local farms, getting local ingredients. Uh, this is exactly the type of business you should support, making delicious ingredients for your food, not just hot sauce, flavorful, unique ingredients that you can use in your cooking, especially now with the weather outside, you're making things like shepherd's pie and stews and all of these great dishes so why not get a Brian Burroughs curry and put that, that curry flavor is going to be great in some of these, these dishes. The golden pumpkin, I like to put that uh, in a breakfast burrito. It gives it a great flavor. The 40 shades of uh, green chili or the Mill City Red. Mill City Red is a little more traditional kind of like that, that Louisiana style hot sauce that I was talking about. Check them all out at cracksauce.com. C R. AIC sauce.com. Use the promo code locked on for 10% off. I'm telling you, if you're a hot sauce lover, or if you know a hot sauce lover, this is going to be a smash gift or a, something you're going to love. Cracksauce.com, locked on for 10% off. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Why not make Locked On Bets your second listen every day? Your boy Q, Lee Sterling, have you covered, pun intended, covered for all the, the gambling. Uh, action that you're looking for. If you are looking to lay some money down at Bet Online, maybe they, they can give you some good advice, help you make a couple of bucks. So check out Locked On Bets wherever you get your podcasts. But yeah, I've been going a little bit long on this podcast. So much to talk about after that game. But let's wrap this up with it's this is the February 1st podcast. So Boston went 10 and 6 in January. That qualifies as a successful month. Um, they will have won now four of their last five uh, games by an average of about 30 points. Uh, that's a successful month. The Celtics are now uh, third or fourth in the NBA, uh, in the East, I should say, when it comes to point differential. Actually, it's third. Cleveland is a plus 4.6. Cleveland, still, that's mind-boggling. Uh, Miami Heat. Plus 3.8. The Celtics are plus 3.4 after this string of point differential. What does that tell you? The Celtics are currently the ninth seed, or actually tied percentage points behind Toronto for eighth, uh, in eighth. So Celtics are the ninth seed. But that plus 3.4 makes it like, okay, so you're the third best point differential. It just tells you that the Celtics have had some bad luck. They've had some late collapses, and they certainly should be winning more than they have been. So at 10 and 6, the Celtics now have a, a, a really uh, a successful month to build on. Was it a great month? No, it could have been a great month where instead of 10 and 6, it would have been 12 and 4. If you beat Charlotte, if you beat Tor uh, or Portland especially, you say, okay, the Atlanta loss, they played, they played like crap. Portland's a game they should have won. I think Charlotte's a game they should have won. You can go back to the New York game they should have won, the Spurs game they should have won. So you take two of those four, and you say, okay, two of them are just going to be bad losses. Two of them can be wins. Chalk up the Philly game. They got crushed in that one. Chalk up Atlanta. 12 and four would have been great. And this kind of speaks to the point differential thing, where if they had just taking care of a couple of things, they'd be in a much better spot. But again, the Celtics dealing with, you know, you didn't have Marcus Smart for some of this. You didn't have full complement of everybody for some of this. You had some coaching decisions that were questionable for, for some of these games. It's some a part of the learning process. But at 10 and 6, successful. And now looking forward, February 2nd, Wednesday game, tomorrow's game, Charlotte. Celtics have revenge on their mind. Right or a make good at least that's a game that they can win. They should come out very motivated to see Charlotte at home again and and win that game. Detroit on Friday, and then Orlando on Sunday. Two games that they should win 
easily. Then they go to Brooklyn on the 8th next Tuesday. At Brooklyn next Tuesday, uh, no Kyrie because unvaccinated, so can't play in Brooklyn. No Kevin Durant because he's out past the All-Star break for a few weeks anyway with that injury. Potential for one, two, three, four winnable games. Then Denver at home. Who knows how that's going to go? Atlanta, toss-up at home, 2 p.m. start, weird time. Philly, you know, it's Philly. It's, it's going to be a tough game there. And then Detroit. So one, two, three, four winnable games, and then one, two, three toss-ups. Win one of those two games, win one of those three games. Can you beat Denver? Can you beat Atlanta? I think you can beat Atlanta. They they, they just tighten up that defense, tighten up your your ball, um, the the just protect the ball more. They can win that game. Although Sunday afternoon, two o'clock game, mm, who knows about that? But anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six wins out of the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six of eight. If they go six of eight moving forward, then the Celtics, six wins and two losses would put them at 33 and 27, which would be pretty good. Can they do it? It's right there for them. It's right there. It's right there. Can they go into the All Star break? Six wins. And two losses moving forward. Can they do it? 33 and 27 makes a big difference. That, you'd you'd beat Charlotte so you could get closer or even leapfrog them. Brooklyn is in shambles right now. They've lost four in a row. Can you you get past? The Celtics have the, it's conceivable that they could be up at least in the seventh seed, maybe even sixth. It's conceivable. I'm not saying I expect it. But the way they've been playing lately, if they can put this together, it's there for them. You've got your regular lineup. The health is important. This regular lineup is actually a winning lineup. Smart as your point guard, the Jays and the two bigs, as much as I say, hey, you can start Grant Williams and you can probably do fine. At this point, forget it. At this point, just go with the starters that you have. Roll with it. It's working deal with the bench. Hopefully somebody can step up, stagger the minutes a little bit differently, maybe change, change who plays with whom, but those are winnable games. The Celtics, despite it all, still have an opportunity. Still. I'll be talking about it. I'll have much more this week. Uh, I'll have post-game shows after the, I'll have a post-game show after the Charlotte game, and then I'll do the same thing I did this week. Next week, the Monday show will be Detroit and Orlando. So I'll have shows Monday through Friday because that's what I do on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. So if you're not listening on a regular basis, you can get – this is the only daily Celtics show out there. And of all the other Celtics podcasts out there, you're only going to get one once a week, maybe, twice, maybe, maybe, if you're lucky. This is daily, Monday through Friday. I'm giving you more content than anybody else. It's free. It's available wherever you get your podcast, and it's on YouTube. If you want to watch the show, I would highly encourage it. Watching it on YouTube, check it out. Uh, if you are a subscriber, please help out by sharing the podcast, spreading the word. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.